Hello guys, did you lose your drone or uh, are you planning to know a little bit before uh, something like this happens and you know how to react? This is the video for you. I've went through all the strategies possible to find my drone and none of them worked so I, I came up with my own and it happened. I found my drone in the middle of, the, of uh, dense bushes and um, it was there. So I'll share with you all the, all the strategies I came up with to just uh, know the spot where he was. So what happened for me to lose my drone was I left uh, a place and I, I had my app programmed to set up the home point as the place where the RC remote is somehow it changed uh, and the uh, spot uh, the home spot just became the place where he started his flight so I was going um, in a trajectory and, and the drone was following me and filming me and then I had to film other stuff like the city and some uh, some lands for another project that I'm doing and the drone at a certain point uh, started having a low battery um, there was a storm coming in so all of these factors were kind of uh, coming together for me to to just not know how to react to that uh, the drone was going below the 30 percent i have the warning for for low battery and uh, it started I, s I started uh, moving him in my direction so he could come. Suddenly it goes below 20% and it says uh, starting uh, his way home. And I was cool with it because uh, I thought it would come to me. Suddenly I see my drone passing by and I realized that it was going for the, the home point, uh, the place where he started his flight. So. <laughs> I didn't know how to react and I was quite uh, well uh, amazed with that because I, I thought he was going to land near me. It didn't happen and it was a few kilometers away. It, it was still like four kilometers away and it wouldn't make it with 25% uh, battery. So I knew that he wouldn't make it but at a certain point it said critical low battery landing and as I was in another side of the hill, it lost connection, so I didn't have access to all the information uh, about the last part of the flight. And I just had the information of um, one of the last spots before he uh, eventually landed or crashed. Um, but anyway, I had this these last informations and it was way impossible for me to get there. Uh, and then I went through the, the information to try to know how to, to, to react in, this, in these kind of situations. And I knew that the app had a find my drone uh, feature. But anyway, all of this was uh, impossible to use. Somehow, um, for me to get to that point uh, where the drone was, it, it would take me about one hour or something. And also, uh, there was this huge storm coming in. Uh, so I was like, and I didn't have my car with me. I was going out with my scooter. So all of this, these things were uh, happening and helping my drone just stay there. And this was quite stressful for me because this is my, my working drone. I do a lot of work with this drone. I love the Mavic Pro. I have the Mavic Pro and the Mavic Zoom. I'll show you. They're both both the same drones. This this they are completely the same drone. What the difference between them both is this has a zoom camera and this has um, the the Pro camera, the Hasselblad camera. These are interchangeable. You can just. Uh, take this camera out and put it there and um, well it's a quite easy process if you want me to do a video on that I can do a video for you just showing you how easy it is you just have to unscrew some uh, some of these uh, um, some of these uh, screws and and just uh, detach a little uh, ribbon cable and and just you know uh, change them 
So if you if you own a Zoom, it will cost you about five hundred dollars to um, or five hundred euros to to just uh, do the upgrade for the the Mavic Pro. It doesn't take any kind of firmware update. You can just uh, stuck it in and, and it's done. But this is not about uh, the the Mavic Pro itself. It's about losing your drone and finding it. Well, so I was in this situation where I couldn't. Uh, react to this I would have to go back home because these to this storm was coming in and and I couldn't go just there and uh, try to get it so I decided to go there later later it would it was it was impossible because he had no battery no kind of uh, find my drone function was already um, available I couldn't see where my drone was uh, I couldn't get the exact location, so I lost all kind of information or possible information to get there. Uh, I couldn't activate the drones beeping and, and uh, the lights. So it was a complete uh, disaster for, for me to just leave it there. But anyways, 100% functional, nothing happened really. It, uh, I don't know. It, it it just seems like it didn't crash. It didn't. Uh, it didn't have any kind of a uh, uh, harsh landing. What I did was, I took these last informations of the flight, uh, and Google Earth, uh, in that sense, is great because it, it really pinpoints your your uh, coordinates location, and I did all these uh, trajectory locations, and I was just I took my my book and started calculating and seeing the not only the, the the spot but also the the speed and the height and I started drawing my um, flight map um, with all the with the information possible because if you take a look at your app you can go to to your app and you you, you can see that uh, it shows you not only the the information about the spot where he is it shows you a lot of more information and that is useful information for you to pinpoint the place where your drone landed uh, it's highly important for you to take this into consideration if you don't have access to the last part of your flight and um, so these last informations I had about my flight were uh, telling me that um, he was going eight meters a second uh, and he was seven meters and a half uh, high and uh, he was going down one sec uh, one meter a second so I calculated all of this and I knew that if he was seven meters high uh, times eight uh, meters a second on uh, horizontal uh, speed he would go across 56 meters, which would be uh, kind of a, a normal scenario in that direction. But it was not just like this. The trees were about uh, one meter and a half high, so this would decrease a little bit of the of the of these uh, of this reach, and it would be like 48 meters. Um, but you have to take into consideration that also the speed of the of the drone was dropping a little bit so I calculated a little bit of the dropping as well and what I calculated sort of like in between 36 meters and 48 meters uh, this would be the sweet spot for me to find my drone and uh, and so this this was the way for me to, to go now you can see that this was uh, his uh, direction and he was going towards this spot where he started his flight from and the spot where he started the flight from was here and um, and I was already back there uh, on the other side of the hill so 36 to 48 uh, meters would be something around let's just do this with Google Earth and this is uh, fine this is great for you to try to find your your drone like 36 37 it would be something 
in between this area here. So this was the area I calculated it, um, it might have dropped. He was exactly here at 39.55 meters away from the spot. And before doing this, I was kind of just going there again and again and again and trying to find it. And I went through all these places. I, f I, I went through all of this and started to try to find him here. And then this part was even more dense and I was kind of afraid it went there. And, and I went here to these rocks and, and I took my Mavic Zoom and it flew off. It, it went there flying all, all over the place and nothing because it was impossible. It was way too dense for the zoom to just show the drone there. I don't know if I'll try to go uh, through the footage now and uh, see the spot where I, why, where I ended up finding him and see if, it, uh, if I can spot it there. But it's highly impossible. It was a way too dense of an area for me to find anything from the air. So, this was my strategy. It ended up uh, being uh, a very good strategy. I found my drone there with these calculations. And so if this is applicable for you, if you don't, if, if your drone falls in a zone where you cannot uh, find it, uh, if you don't have a GPS tracker. Now I know uh, I could have bought a GPS tracker and put it on, on my drone. I didn't. and. I'll, I'll do it in uh, as soon as possible. I'll buy a GPS uh, tracker to my drones in order for me not to lose them anymore because it, it's a highly stressful situation when you're spending as much money as you are to buy a DJI uh, drone like, like this one, like the Pro 2. Um, it is, um, and also the Zoom, the, the, the Mavic 2 is, is expensive, it's an expensive in investment, it, it, you also depend on that probably to do your all of your professional work, if you have work to do and to deliver. Uh, I also had some footage of my 360 cam on that uh, same card that it ended up working just fine. Um, and, uh, and so, you know, you want to prevent these kind of things from happening. You don't want any of this to happen to you. So, but if it does, you'll have to know how to react to this uh, as soon as possible because uh, the longer it stays there, the more deteriorated the, the, the parts of it can get. And um, I, I was lucky enough for, for, it, for it to just, you know, be completely, um, uh, it, it doesn't it doesn't show any kind of a of a, a problem it doesn't have any kind of a of a markings it, it's it's perfect and um, but anyway leaving it out in the rain like it was we went through two days of very harsh rain and and, and bits of, uh, of uh, ice uh, falling and these last days were not very easy for the for this drone <laughs> but anyway it's it's a machine it's an incredible machine that the the gi does it, it's really rugged it's it's a very uh, stiff uh, and durable durable machine and i'm quite happy it just uh, it, it it uh it took all this uh all this crazy weather and also very hot temperatures there on the field and it's working 100%. So another tip which is if you own a 360 camera like the Instant X 360 you just stick it on a pole and if your drone is stuck on one of these um, you know very dense bushes you stick the 360 camera there and you go inside the, the bushes and start looking. I prefer to use my katana and I went through all those bushes like bashing it all until I got to that spot where I sort of knew where he was and I missed I missed by few because it was he was some somewhere around here and I was thinking in between 36 and 40 
sorry, and 48. Between 36 and 48, it was like at 40. Uh, so it was somewhere in between these two calculations. You have to uh, take into consideration that the drone will lose uh, uh, the ability to, it will lose a little bit of speed. And also besides losing speed, you will probably reach a point in which you will land vertically and, or it will hit something and you will probably fall and crash. And uh, so this is my experience. I've learned a lot from this. Uh, it's probably the worst way to lose your drone and not, you, you know, you don't have access to any of the features that DJI prov uh, provides for you to find your drone. So this is probably the, the worst way to lose it for a first time. It's, 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 it's very bad. And one thing is for sure, don't stress because I was stressing. Look, I was thinking maybe that all of this is wrong and it's somewhere else. So I started going around, way around, <laughs> like I went to several places in this field and I came through here and I did all of this. It's useless. Just go with the GPS co coordinates, draw them on your Google Earth. It's free for you to use and it's quite accurate. Take note of each one of the coordinates, insert them into the into Google Earth and watch the, the way you went. And also in these markers, you can just uh, take your notes, uh, like you can edit this note and it will draw this uh, this course now the, the first spot where I went was here and uh, in that same day I told my girlfriend I lost my drone let's go there let's try to find it and we went here uh, we went through all of this we then came here because these areas are quite accessible uh, and you can walk although there's a lot of grass um, and the, the grass is this high uh, it will be hard for for you to find it probably but well it's easier than just going in the in these woods these are very dense uh, and very hard for you to find anything there you cannot just cross it's impossible you have to to cut it cut your way through uh, all of this to to get somewhere there um, so then we went this way we went around this I even went even went there and try to find it here because I thought maybe you went even further um, and it was going eight meters a second horizontally which is uh, which is uh, still uh, a little bit of speed, so you could probably have gotten here, but he didn't. Um, and with all of these calculations, if you do all this math, it doesn't take you very long for you to understand. You just take the speed, you multiply it by the, the number of meters that you have, you, need, you try to include the, the possible uh, obstacles and height of the obstacles that you have. Like if you have uh, an obstacle with two meters and it was eight meters high, you just take two meters out and you multiply it by six. And if you have a ver uh, an horizontal speed of eight times six, you have your value. Also take in co into consideration if, you, uh, if you're able to um, try to remember the how the wind was and also the possible deviation that he might have suffered uh, if he lost uh, his battery completely uh, so if your drone is in a free fall and if it was way too high uh, and and it has no battery to, to, to come down um, if it happens try to take the wind into, into consideration and calculate that uh, to know your spot those were strategies that I came up with he landed on on almost that spot uh, I imagined uh, that's it that's my experience uh, I hope it's helpful for you I hope you c if if you draw if you lost your drone uh, you can use this knowledge and find it and um, if you're if you didn't lose your drone yet then well uh, if there this ever happens 
and act as soon as possible, calculate all your stuff as soon as possible in order for it, for it not to deteriorate uh, out in the, in the field. And um, this is it. Thank you guys for watching. I hope this is uh, helpful content for all of you who are um, in this uh, stressful situation of uh, losing your drone. So we brought Lucky with us <laughs> so he could find a drone, but it was not. It would be easy for him to find a bone, not a drone. Let's see if he connects with, uh, with the RC remote first and then try to make him fly. Start off sequence. The gimbal seems to be okay. And now we'll have to put it into pairing mode because it was paired with my other zoom. I've been flying over this place with this one, trying to find it. I, 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 I did over, I don't know, I did over two hours of filming the zone, but it was completely impossible because it was under a tree. So it wouldn't be easy at all even with the zoom uh, trying to find it and it's on okay let's try to start him and see if he flies i'll do something that you shouldn't which is this That's it, he's flying, <laughs> he's okay, so I'm quite thrilled with this. That app, if you lose connection before it lands, sucks. It was supposed to have landed there and the landing spot was over there. So you have to take a look at the landing spot and to see if it's connected to the the remote or if it didn't lose connection before landing. My dog is, is tired. <laughs> uh, fortunately, it doesn't happen every time you go out. It just happened to me once. It was this time I had the uh, Polar Pro uh, ND16 stuck on the, on the lens and uh, 128 gigabyte uh, card so I could uh, record and it has a lot of footage that i've done on those days so i would have lost it all and i need it for the project i'm doing so it was it's kind of uh i don't consider this to be luck because there's no luck into it i would come here as often as possible nobody comes here uh probably just hunters and uh, it would be quite difficult to get to that zone because that's uh, that's quite inaccessible. Even for the dogs, it's, it was quite inaccessible. So I had to cut through everything to get there. And uh, so this is it. I was filming a lot of great stuff in that day. I'm waiting to get back home and insert the card in the computer and try to check out all the things that I've recorded. It's probably uh, still uh, still working because I didn't have any kind of trouble with any of my cards ever, even with drops of water and stuff like that. Well, good things come to those who wait. See you guys.